Ah, the late summer movie. August is a time for films that were too crappy to be released earlier in the summer. Every so often you get a good one, like Bullet Train, but this is sadly not the case for Fall, a movie about two climbers who attempt climbing a giant TV antenna. This is the latest production from BuzzFeed Motion Pictures. If you don't know, BuzzFeed is a millennial company best known for clickbait articles and top 10 lists. On the surface, the film presents itself as a serious thriller. So I don't think the filmmakers intended for this to be a comedy. But as a climber, I found so many things wrong with both the plot and the execution that I couldn't help but laugh. The other people in the theater most likely didn't appreciate my laughing every few minutes during seemingly tense scenes, but I just couldn't help myself since most of it was so ridiculous. Fall is one of those movies that's so bad you can't help but watch the train wreck. The movie begins with three rock climbers on the face of some unknown mountain. The couple, Becky and Dan, played by Grace Caroline Curry and Mason Gooding, are multi-pitch lead climbing and are joined by free soloist Hunter, played by Virginia Gardner, who vaguely resembles Reese Witherspoon. Right away, you notice pretty terrible green screening. I'm not sure they even consulted real climbers since this movie shows what people think climbing is rather than what it really entails. Becky and Dan are shown to be lead climbing, but they make so many mistakes that I wasn't even shocked when Dan fell to his death. Honestly, I'm surprised the two women didn't fall to their deaths in the opening scenes. For a film going for the feminist girl power message, they totally contradict themselves by portraying sheer stupidity. But I digress. A year later, we see Becky mourning the death of her husband by drowning her sores in good old-fashioned whiskey. I like how this girl doesn't mess around. Go hard or go home. She is confronted by her father James, played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who himself resembles Javier Bardem. He warns her to get over her sorrows since her husband wasn't all that he appeared to be. She dismisses him and goes home to wallow in her sorrows. As she's attempting to off herself with pills and alcohol, she receives a call from her climbing friend Hunter, or discount Reese Witherspoon, who proposes they climb a decommissioned 2,000 foot TV antenna in the middle of the desert. At first Becky is hesitant, but acquiesces when she realizes she has to move on and get over her fear of climbing. They arrive at the tower and begin their ascent up the convenient ladder. Not real climbing, huh? I love how Becky has climbing shoes, whereas Hunter has just a pair of chucks. Who in their right mind would climb with a pair of chucks? Oh, unintentional comedy. I get it. Once at the top, discount Reese Witherspoon begins to obnoxiously film herself performing stupidly dangerous stunts. It's like she wants to die, or she's completely unaware of her actions. I guess that's what being an influencer is all about. When Becky spreads Dan's ashes off the top of the antenna, we see discount Reese Witherspoon begin to cry. Becky questions this but is dismissed immediately. Whatever could this be about? This is the film's attempt at being serious, but it ends up telegraphing the plot from a mile away. Dan had been having an affair with discount Reese Witherspoon all along, yet we don't see any emotion from Becky on this. She just sort of takes it. As they begin to climb back down, the rusty ladder detaches and falls to the ground, stranding the pair at the top ledge of the antenna. From here, the film devolves into an unrealistic mess. The pair attempt to contact the outside world, but find they are too high for cell reception. They then try to descend to the next ledge to retrieve their backpack, but they only brought 50 feet of rope, which is not nearly enough to reach it. No worries, discount Reese Witherspoon unclips herself from her harness to jump down to the ledge, a move not even the world's dumbest daredevil would even attempt. As night falls, they begin to get desperate and attempt ever stupider and more dangerous ideas for contacting people, such as throwing their shoes down to get the attention of a couple of drifters who just steal their car. Admittedly, that's a pretty dick move by the two drifters to leave the pair stranded on the antenna, but I guess that was to add additional tension and horror. Eventually, we find out that Becky was hallucinating the last day of being stuck on the antenna and see that discount Reese Witherspoon fell to her death onto the near ledge. So Becky uses her body as cushioning to throw her cell phone down to the ground to send one last ditch effort text message to her father. Discount Javier Bardem receives the message and calls in police to rescue his daughter. At the end, they go home together, which is pretty baffling. Becky committed at least a few felonies, including reckless endangerment that resulted in death and the cops were just going to let her go? That's some privilege right there. It seems that ever since Alex Honnold made his epic free solo climb of El Capitan in Yosemite National Park in the amazing documentary Free Solo, we've seen a surge in people getting into the sport of climbing. I usually find it obnoxious when people say they were into it before the movie, but I was into climbing before the documentary debuted, so I've seen the surge of interest firsthand. 
Real climbers don't usually attempt these sorts of shenanigans. As a climber, I don't know of any real climber who would climb an abandoned TV antenna. This is where the film makes assumptions about the sport and it becomes painfully clear that no research was done by the film's producers. Also, the acting shows that the two actresses made no effort to get to know what climbing was about prior to filming. Usually, serious actors do some research in order to play their characters better. But not these two. They had it all figured out just by watching a few scenes from Free Solo. Ultimately, Fall was a forgettable affair. It was a throwaway film by a studio which really doesn't understand good cinema. But I guess that's what you get from BuzzFeed. Mostly throwaway material. I would say A for effort, but I'd be giving this movie way too much credit. The film also shows how stupid these two women are, thereby negating any intended girl power messaging the film may have had. What a mess of a movie. Save yourself the time waste and see something else, unless you want to see something ludicrously bad. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more great content.